So VCV2 is released, is out with many new features and improvements, including a commercial VST version that you can use in your favorite DAW. Um, so really in this video, I want to go through some of those uh, new features and improvements, and we will start with the new browser. As you can see, the browser got a new update, and now we can zoom in and out, or we can set the zoom amount, right? So we can set it exactly how we want so we can see better which modules we want to use and add to our patches. Then we can also sort them in different ways. I have it uh, mostly um, selected at most used. So I have the most used modules at the beginning. We can also use a uh, less updated or according to brand or even random if you just want to experiment. Right, which is also quite interesting. Um, we also have now a favorites tab. So if, for example, I right click the sequencer or whatever module you want to use, we can choose a favorite. It also has a, a shortcut control click on Windows. Right, so if I add it to the favorite, you can see it's yellow. And here, if I click the favorites tab, we have a new tab just for favorite modules that you might use more often and you want them there. Right, and of course, we can also remove it. And of course, we have also the tags, just like before, we can choose also multiple um, tags by holding control on Windows. So if I want, for example, an effect, which is also a delay, um, we have this, for example, if I reset it, if I want, for example, a polyphonic filter, right? So I can select two tabs and now I get all of the different polyphonic filters and we can choose also according to the brand so again really the module browser got a really nice update it makes it much more easier to bring um, uh, select or bring modules into your patches another big improvement is the new design of the vcv fundamentals and in overall also the vcv look you can see it's a sort of a 3d look which is quite slick Right, we have different um, uh, designs for the different fundamental modules. You can see the sequencer is quite different. Also the quantizer, finally we have a keyboard we can choose notes from. And the first note is uh, down here instead of up. Right, um, we have also the wavetable LFO and VCO instead of the VCO2 uh, and LFO2. Right, so basically it's more or less the same, but in this case, we can load also wavetables. So if you have different wavetables, you can load them and use them. And it also looks quite interesting. Also the delay got an update. And um, now we have also a clock input and the wet output. So we can create all sorts of different feedback loops. We have a new audio module, the audio two, which, uh, with only a stereo in, stereo out and a level control. Right, which is also quite useful. The ADSR also got a new look, so now we can see exactly what's going on, which is quite helpful, especially for beginners. Right, and the scope is also a bit different. And now it responds also to the color of the cables. So if I send, for example, a red cable, you can see the signal is red. If I send it a blue cable, you can see the signal is blue, so it makes it much more easier to see what's going on. Another really big feature is the ability to select multiple modules just by clicking and dragging and now I can move them anywhere I want in the patch. We can also duplicate multiple modules, right? So if for example, I want another voice, I can just uh, hit control D and then it will duplicate them without the cables, just like this. Right, you can see there are no cables, but I can also uh, on Windows hold Control and Shift, and I guess on Mac is Command and Shift or something like this. And again, D, and then it will duplicate them with the cables already connected. This is also in the right click menu, you can see duplicate control D with cables, shift control and D. Now this is not all of it. We can also save multiple modules as sorts of uh, presets, if you will. And um, so if for example, I like this voice, I use this voice many times, I can just select the modules, save selection as, right? And then for example, basic voice, I have it here, I will just save it on top of it. Right, and now if I go to edit, import selection, basic, and now I have again those modules and I can load them in other patches 
you can save presets like this if there are things that you are using most of the time with the, uh, all of the settings and the cables already connected. And if you're already dealing with cable management, there are a few new features that really help with color coding. I usually, if you watch my videos, I uh, use color coding. So I have yellow for pitch, I have green for modulation, red for audio and blue for clock gates and triggers. Right, so let's say I have here uh, this clock and I want to send a clock to uh, all of those sequencers. So first of all, I would like to use a blue cable. Until now I had to go and click until I got the blue cable. Now I can right click the output and I can select a new cable in a different color. So for example, I want a blue one. I just grab it, hold it, and now I can send a blue cable to the sequencer. Now, if I want to duplicate this cable, I hold control again on Windows, probably command on Mac, and now I can get a new cable, right? either from the output or from the destination. But now when I do this, the color of the cable stays the same. So I'm not getting a new color. I will keep the color blue. So now it's really easy for me just to duplicate this cable to the other clock inputs and keep my color coding uh, working. Now, there is another new feature that is really helpful when we deal with cables. So here I have the CV output going to multiple um, oscillators, right, pitch uh, information in this case because it's yellow. And now I want to disconnect one of the oscillators, but I don't want to disconnect it from the oscillator. Let's say that the patch is really big and I don't want to go search uh, the module that is connected. I want to make this from the output. So if I zoom in a bit again in the right click menu, now I can see exactly all of the cables that are coming out of this output, right? I have the wavetable VCO, even VCO, another VCO, and another even VCO. If I want to disconnect one of them, I just click it, and then I have this cable, and if I release it, I can disconnect it, or I can connect it to somewhere else. Here I have another CV input. Again, I can just right-click it, and either I can take another cable, I can delete the uh, top cable, or I can choose the cable I want to disconnect or connect somewhere else. Just click and drag it. One thing to keep in mind here, in the last version, right-clicking a cable would disconnect it. In this case, it will not disconnect it. It will open this um, window, this uh, menu. If you want to disconnect a cable, you have to um, hold Shift and left-click the mouse. Right, so this is a change, but you get used to it really quickly. Another interesting feature is the ability to save templates for individual modules. So the next time you load them into your patch, they will load with those settings that were saved. So for example, I have here the FM operator. I like to use um, the internal envelope, sustain down, and in uh, attack almost all the way down. And I want these settings uh, those settings to load each time I load the module. So in the right-click menu under preset, I can save template, right? And now it's saved the next time that I load the module. As you can see here, it's loaded with those settings. I can do this again just so you will believe me. <laughs> of course, we can also save um, presets. It's much easier now to save presets. So let's say this is the preset I would like to save. Again, right-click menu, preset, um, save as, let's call this two, for example, right? And now if I load another instance of the FM operator, now it's already in the right-click menu. You can see I have here the presets. If I load number two, I have this preset. I can load number one and have a different preset, right? And like this, you can go and save presets for different modules and load them already within the patch. Now, another interesting feature and I can show you this here. I have here a small patch going, uh, plats going through clouds. Right. This is basically the patch. And now let's say that I want to experiment with the different um, modes of plats. So in the right-click menu, we have the different modes. Let's say that I want to experiment and see which sound works best for me. So now if I click the second mode here, for example, it will change, but the menu will close. And now I have to go again and open the menu and select a different mode and it will close. On Windows, when you hold Control, probably on Mac is Command. 
the window, the menu will not close and I can go like this and select different modes. Right, an experiment. Which, uh, which uh, sound I like the most. Right, the same for example for the quantizer. So the quantizer comes now with many different presets of different scales. If I want to experiment with different scales, I don't have to select and then the uh, menu will close and I have to open it again. I can hold Control or Command on, on the Mac and select. Right, select different scales and experiment. Just like this, without the menu being closed. Another feature that is great for when working on sound design is that now we have the ability, instead of disabling modules, we have the ability to bypass them so the signal will still go through and we can compare with the effect of the module or without, which is quite, quite cool. So here I have a sequence, right, which is going through T-Rex from uh, all right devices, which is a bit crusher and sample rate reduction. Let's say that I want to start introducing some bit crushing and sample rate reduction. Right now, instead of uh, playing with the wet and comparing it to how it was before, in the right-click menu, we have bypass, or we can use the shortcut Control and E. So now the module is bypassed, but the signal is still going through, so we can listen to how it was before and compare it. Right, so when we are working on sound design, we can really use this feature to compare the different effects. Another feature that you might find interesting is that now we can set the mouse wheel to scroll uh, the different knobs and parameters. So this is under the uh, view. We have a scroll wheel knob control. If I activate this and I uh, go, for example, for the tempo, I can with the mouse wheel change the values, right? And I can just go like this and very quickly change the different values of the different parameters. We also have here a sensitivity for this. So if I take this down a bit, now I have to scroll more. If I take this quite up, it will move much quicker, right? So we can use the mouse also for scrolling the different parameters. I will turn this off for now. And, and another one that is quite, quite amazing that is now, it's now built in. This is the lights off mode under view. We have room brightness, so we can turn off the lights, right, just like this. And we can add also bloom, which is also quite interesting. So the knobs will, as you can see, bloom. Right now, this might take more CPU. I'm not so sure. I still have to make the comparison, but you can see it looks quite cool. And the best is with the mouse. You can see where my mouse is. There's a bit more light going on, which is quite fun also for videos and stuff like this. Right, so we have also lights off. Okay, so this is something many have been waiting for. Um, there is now a commercial VST version of VC Virac that you can load in your favorite DAW. Here I'm showing it with Ableton. Of course, this will work with any DAW um, or software that can load VSTs or VST instruments and effects. Um, there will be dedicated videos uh, on my channel um, about using it with Ableton, Bitwig, Reaper, maybe other DAWs. But let me quickly show you what's going on here, just so you can get a taste of what's uh, possible to do with this VST. So here I have a track and the VCV VST loaded. You can see it's exactly VCV rec. Uh, many have asked if you can change the screen size. So yes, you can resize the screen, of course, because if you have bigger patches. So here I have two voices. I have a hi-hat and I have energy. And you can multi-track record them in your DAW. So here I'm sending one voice to outputs one and two. So here I have another track set with those inputs or outputs, whatever, with two effects. I have here other desert cities and I have here, of course, uh, the lovely Valhalla Supermassive. Right, so if now we'll have a look here, I hit play in Ableton, you will see that here things starts uh, to run. And also the voice is playing. 
Singt to Ableton. Right, and again, this is just one voice. I have you two voices, and I multi-track them. I multi-track them into another track here. So here is the track for the Hyatt. If I unmute it, right. So like this, you can send up to 16 channels and record up to 16 channels individually. You can also sequence VCV rack from, um, from your DAW, again Ableton in this case. So here I have some chords, right? And I have here VCV rack loaded with a voice, a polyphonic voice, because VCV rack is also polyphonic and I have some delay on it. Very cool. Now, of course, you can also use VCV Rack um, as an effect also to process different sounds. So here I have Operator and I'm using VCV here, VCV Rack 2 FX. Again, it's another VST and I'm using it. Uh, I'm sending the Operator right through the audio module. This is going through two filters, through clouds, mutable instruments, clouds, the Briatus from Vult for some saturation and <laughs> of course, <laughs> the lovely plateau and the reverb from Valley, right? And you can see there's also more, um, automation going on. So let me show you this. You can also um, record or write automation for VCV Rack. So I have both filters with automation, right? You can see how they are moving according to the automation. Let me just unmute this, right? Right, so again, you can automate things, you can sequence things, you can record, multi-track record, and do all sorts of different things, everything you ever wanted with VCV Rack in your DAW. Um, and that was it. Again, there will be dedicated uh, videos about the different features or some of the different features, dedicated videos about the VSTs, so stay tuned. VCV2 is out. Um, that's it, cheers.